Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Elric, here on the motherboards.org YouTube channel with my buddy JJ, Mr. ROG from Asus. And today we're gonna do something really cool for you guys. I see every day in the forums and on the YouTube page and everywhere, you guys ask, how do I distinguish one Asus board from another board? So today we're gonna take a look at a few of their boards from their new Z77 stack and tell you the differences and why you might want to purchase this board. I'm gonna hand this over to JJ so he can start giving you an explanation of these boards we have here before us. Thanks, Doc. Um, you know, pretty much like we outlined in our overview video where we talked about a lot of uh, key technologies, I definitely would recommend that to any of the viewers, if they're interested in kind of seeing that high level detail. Go back and see the other video. Definitely check that out because here I think we're just going to try to spotlight some of the key differences between, let's say, our standard, our pro, our deluxe, and also maybe factor in the little dash i deluxe for the guys that like small form factor. The mini max. The mini max. That's oh, right. Yeah. We got it. So uh, starting off from the entry level SKU, this is our standard board, right? So this is going to be more price aggressive, right? It's a little bit over 200 bucks about 205 in terms of the price point, but as we know in the overview video, very feature rich. So what we have here is we've got single band Wi-Fi, we've got five four pin PWM fan headers on the board. We still keep S-Align Crossfire support, we've got the Thunderbolt header, but some of the things that we're missing in relation to say some of the other boards that we'll look at is there's no eSATA connectivity on this board. Okay. Okay. Uh, we still have the VGA uh, and legacy connections such as PS2 and VGA on the boards. And um, I know that you had some questions behind this as to why we might have VGA on exactly. these boards. Exactly. Because a lot of my users and stuff beat this up and they go, why does anybody have that on them? But you explain that there's something out there now that's called APAC and that is basically an Asian conglomerate that makes sure that the technology will be able to be used for those people so they want you to implement this product. Well, essentially, internally within the company, we call APAC the region and the Asia uh, Pacific. So essentially, that's going to be countries like China and uh, surrounding countries in that area. They might still be utilizing maybe more legacy based connections. Since we're, of course, the world's largest motherboard manufacturer, we do still need to have to factor in support for other countries and other regions. Since it's a little bit more price aggressive skew, that's the reason why you might still see, let's say, VGA or PS2 on here, as well as maybe like PCI slots. Uh, we're on our higher end boards, which are definitely the focus here of the enthusiasts in America's audience. You're going to see less of those legacy connections. Okay. Also, just let the audience know the building board we're actually initially talking about is the P8Z77V. You guys can see that. This is the entry level motherboard, like JJ was saying. In addition to that, um, uh, with the serial ATA header in terms of the 8th SATA, 7th and 8th SATA port that we have here on the board, this is our updated AS Media 1061 controller. So it replaces previously we used to use the Marvell. It's actually faster read and write performance, um, but that's also going to be a little bit of a difference compared to what we have on, let's say, the deluxe board. Um, the other uh, last detail is if we go ahead and just flip this around for you guys here, in terms of the actual phase design. Uh, this is an 8 plus phase design as opposed to the next board where we go over where it's going to keep going up. And uh, lastly will be that while we still keep the great Intel NIC on here, there's no dual NIC configuration. So I think that gives us a little bit of perspective on what we have on the standard board. So let's jump over to the board. Also, just one thing I want to mention too, JJ, is that this board also has legacy control still on the board. Now, there will be some changes between this, the Pro, and the Deluxe. But I just want to let you guys know that if you guys have old school mouse or keyboard, this board still has that technology on it. Yeah, and good call out in terms of that you said uh, both keyboard and mouse because it is a combo port. It's a so, combo port, yep, so combo legacy port. Both. But um, something that we still see actually for users, good point that you bring it up, um, never plug in a PS2 mouse live or keyboard live. It's a serial technology. You should only be plugged in when you have your system off. Ah, okay, yeah. good to know. So let's uh, go ahead and move over to the Pro board. Now this is the P8Z77V Pro. Yep. This is the next step up above their entry level motherboard. So we keep a lot of things very consistent. We still have the wireless, still single band, but we step over to six uh, four pin PWM fan headers as opposed to five that were on the standard. We go over to a 12 stage uh, phase design on this board. So it's a little bit more robust, but overall, like we talked about earlier, same overclocking experience essentially across all these boards. Very high end in terms of that. No worries in that regard. Um, we still keep the 1061 for the 8th, 7th uh, and 8th SATA ports That's on the board. That's down here for you guys out there. One of the updates that we have an improvement uh, to the standard board is going to be that there's another front USB 3 header on the board. So this board actually has a total of 8. There's 4 USB ports on the back, 2 from the Intel, 2 from the AS Media, then the 2 front ports which are also from the Intel and then two more ports, uh, which are from the AS Media. So a total of eight on this board. So just to reiterate, the very first board we took at the entry level one, it had six 
USB 3.0 ports, and now we jumped up and the next board has eight. Mm -hmm. So that gives a little bit of perspective on some of the other updates. Now, this is included in the accessory, so it's not on the board, but this also does come with an eSATA bracket. So you do have then the ability to go ahead and have eSATA. You're just gonna go ahead and have to connect it to one of these ports, and then you'll have the bracket, bracket output, which gives you two USB ports as well as an eSATA output. Okay, that's just an available option that you can change the board to if you choose to, correct? Correct, and that does come included in the accessories while well. we noted with the standard no eSATA support. Okay, okay. perfect. So uh, if that's from there, go ahead and take a look at the deluxe board. All right, now here, folks, here is the P8Z77V Deluxe. Now this board's gonna have a lot of different features between these boards, starting off with A, let's just start off with, JJ, the controller. Controller, right. Um, for this one, we actually have SSD caching support on the motherboard, and this is different. Uh, the main reason why we have this, even though the Z77 chipset has SSD caching, as you know, a lot of enthusiasts are using uh, RAID configurations for SSD, and they're running the, off the PCH. Um, but if you're running it off the PCH and you're in a RAID, you're taking up those two ports, you can't actually run RST anymore. So SSD caching from the Intel chipset. So we're keeping you the ability to allow you to connect like a two terabyte hard drive, add an SSD and then have SSD caching for your local storage. So that's a plus point where in the deluxe segment, we see more complex storage configurations. Excellent points. What about some of the things on the rear IO as well? This is something we're gonna really wanna poke find out to the folks out there. The rear I.O. is actually a lot different now on this one. Gone are any legacy support whatsoever. We see the VGA port has been removed and we see the addition of more USB ports once again on this motherboard. Mm -hmm. And uh, in addition to that, so outside of the, let's say four USB ports that we have there, which would replace like two with like a PS2 port, we also have dual band Wi-Fi with Bluetooth. So you got 2.4, five gigahertz and BT 4.0 on that board. And also this one has both an Intel and a Realtek LAN support on here, correct? That's correct. Actually right here uh, is one of the controllers and then the other controller right there. So we have uh, the network eye control software. We'll actually work on both of those. So you get the packet priority functionality for both of those ports, but you do have dual NIC functionality on that board as well. Now, one of the very specialized functions that's not as easy to see is going to be the- PSX chip. Yes, the PLX bridge the PLX chip bridge, excuse me. That we have on here. Uh, this is a specialized chip that gives us the ability to have more active PCI lanes because it's doing multiplexing from the PCH. The benefit of this is, let's say if you're running like Crossfire SLI, which is still an option on the standard in the pro boards, um, limitation is gonna be that if you're running active devices, let's say like add-in controllers uh, for USB or eSATA or you know secondary SATA ports, at one point something has to shut down because there's not enough PCI lanes to go to everything. So the deluxe board has this PLX that gives us the ability to keep more active connections all running at one time. I actually feel that that's like one of the very really good components about this board that separates from the rest because if you're going to be doing a lot of SLI and that type of configuration on this board, those type of features are really going to make this board stand out. Yes, I definitely agree with that. In addition to that, we also step up to a 16 stage VRM design. We also have a full heat pipe, centered heat pipe to go ahead and give, you can give us better temperature performance for the VRM assembly and we then have the debug LED on there as well for the guys that want a little bit more technical data during the post process. So that overall gives, I think, a little bit of a breakdown relative to the uh, three core boards. And I think that uh, for the mini ITX board that we'll cover here quickly, we're gonna see a lot of symmetry uh, in comparison to the actual large deluxe board. So from here, we go ahead and we're now focusing on the P8Z77-I Deluxe. Minimax. Minimax, that's right. Um, Basically a motherboard the size of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Um, this is an awesome board. We took a lot of time here to pretty much do a no compromise design, uh, even though we're dealing with really small form factor. So this is going to be very similar to the Deluxe. We've got a very high-end Digi Plus VRM design. Okay, so we messaged that in our overview video. So that's gonna give us high-end overclocking performance. In terms of the connectivity, we got a lot going on here. We've got four SATA ports on the board, right? So you still have the ability to go ahead and run SATA 6G RAID configurations. You have a full physical by 16 slot there for expansion. Uh, the wireless controller that we're using on here, it's full dual band support. So you have 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz with Bluetooth. So you're locked and loaded there. You've got a clear CMOS button and the USB BIOS flashback support here. There is one internal front USB 3 port on there. So you actually have a total in terms of two ports here. If we then look here at the back, you've got another two ports here and another two ports here. We then have uh, eSATA on the back plane with two eSATA ports. 
So overall, not missing much. And then we've even got the Intel Gigabit Network with the Network Eye Control technology. Yeah, like I basically broke it down earlier, JJ, I kind of feel like this is the deluxe board just in a mini little form factor. And this new DigiVRM, this little piece right here, this little piece right here, folks, is gonna allow extreme overclocking on this little board. So instead of having all this technology laid out in your board, taking up real estate and creating heat on the board, it's all taken off the board and put into this module, which I think is a really good design. Yeah, I'll tell you actually with internally within our labs, um, with this board, even though it's not necessarily, let's say like the focus board in terms of overclocking like our deluxe board might be, or like ROG might be, we've actually already gone over 6.9 gigahertz on this little mini ITX yeah, board. Yeah, this is actually the board that uh, me and Shannon, Rob, a friend of mine, plan on really doing some serious overclocking on as well. Very so. cool. So uh, I think that gives a little bit of perspective regarding this board. This is gonna be an awesome board, not just from the core HTPC usage. This could make an awesome everyday little small form factor box, a portable gaming rig. You got a lot of flexibility. It's just really gonna come down to, do you necessarily need some additional PCIe slots? Because outside of that, you've got all other connections on the board. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really amazing. You haven't sacrificed any of the performance or any of the technology when they make things smaller. This maintains all the functionality and performance value that you're going to see on a larger segment and board, but all, like I said before, on a board that's basically the size of my hand.